Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you another anti haul. I really love making these videos. You guys seem to really enjoy them. As always, with any of my anti haul videos, this is no disrespect to any of the brands or any of the people associated with these products or with anyone who may own these products or really want to own these products. For one reason or another, these products just don't have a place in my current collection and so I won't be purchasing them. But let me know in the comments down below if you own any of the products, if you think that they're amazing and that I should reconsider. So yeah, let's jump into the video. So the first product on my anti-haul list is the Too Faced Glitter Bomb Eye Shadow Collection. This palette has eight glitter colors and two base colors. So the black and the white uh, shades that you see in there are base colors that you can use to either brighten the glitter shades or deepen, darken them. The whole palette itself is $45, which I don't think is a totally ludicrous over the top price for a Too Faced palette. The biggest reason that I won't be purchasing this palette is that I just don't wear glitter eyeshadows. I have read a lot of re reviews on Sephora and the reviews have said that the shadows themselves are very pigmented. They are as easy to work with as glitter shades go and that they are very pretty shades, but that there is a lot of fallout. And so they do recommend that you buy the Too Faced um, glitter or like primer insurance, I think it's called shadow insurance, to go along with the glitter shadows. So that obviously means that you're not just buying like a $45 palette, you're buying the $45 palette. And if you get the shadow insurance little primer, eyelid primer, then that's probably like an extra 20 bucks or something. It's a pretty palette. Again, the biggest reason that I won't be purchasing this palette is that I just don't wear glitter eyeshadows enough to warrant spending almost $50 on a whole glitter eyesha eyeshadow palette. And yeah, that's that's the main main reason. I just I I just don't gravitate toward glitter shadows. If anything, I use shimmer sort of like on the middle of my lid to brighten and open up my eyes, but I don't really ever come across an occasion where I really need a glitter shadow. So, for that reason, I will be skipping out on this palette. The next palette that is on my anti-haul list is the Tarte Clay Play Face Shaping Palette. The palette has 12 clay matte eyeshadows that multi task as universal eye, nose, and brow shapers and contouring shades. So that's the little blurb that they have on Sephora.com underneath the description of what the palette is. Now the biggest turnoff for me about this palette was that it is marketing itself as a universal sculpting palette. Now I don't have the deepest skin tone out there, but I do have a deeper skin tone than your, than like, Caucasian, right? So I'm olive skin tone and out in this during the summertime out in the sun I get a lot darker. I found that a lot of universal palettes Don't a lot of like universal contour palettes just don't come up on my skin tone And so if it's not coming up on my skin tone, then it's probably not going to be coming up on girls who have skin tones that are even deeper than mine. So I just kind of looked at this palette and for the palette to say that it's a universal palette that can be used universally to contour cheeks, nose, like the face, I just, I don't see it in this palette. I don't, I can see how certain shades might work, but as like a universal palette to be used like as a contour and an eyeshadow palette, I just don't, I don't think it cuts it. And you know, maybe I wouldn't feel I don't know, maybe I wouldn't have put it on the list if they didn't call themselves like a universal contouring palette. Maybe I just would have seen it and thought like, oh meh, it's just like your average, you know, eyeshadow palette. But it's weird for them to market it as an eyeshadow palette and a contouring palette. And for them, again, to like market it as a universal eyeshadow palette and contour palette. So that's probably the biggest reason why I'm just not gonna be purchasing the palette. I don't know if I mentioned, but it's $46. So again, almost $50. And for something that has probably a good number of shades that I won't be able to use as contour and shades, or really as eyeshadow shades in general, because a lot of those shades, you know, again, I have very olive, like a deep olive skin tone. They're not really gonna come up. I would rather just give this palette a skip. 
The next product on my anti-haul list is the new Beauty Blender. It's called the Beauty Blender Swirl. It is a very gorgeous Beauty Blender. Now, I am a sucker for all things like pink and cute, and this is definitely pink and cute. It looks like a little ice cream swirl. It's adorable. The reason I won't be purchasing it is because I already have a Beauty Blender. I don't need a new one. This is limited edition. And I have read some reviews that where the colors meet, so where the pink and the white meet, it is a little crumbly. So the sponge itself kind of crumbles a little bit. It might not be as well made as the other ones. And I feel like sometimes we find that with limited edition, special edition products. The brand just kind of like pumps it out and there might not be as much attention made to that special edition product that is only out for like two weeks versus products that are, are like staples in their collection. So yeah, that's the reason I won't be purchasing this. I do think it's really pretty. I do think it's really cute. I don't know. It would make me nervous. Like if I needed a beauty blender right now, it would make me nervous to buy this one just because if it doesn't work and if it does kind of get crumbly, then, you know, 20 bucks is not nothing to spend on a beauty blender. You'd have to just go and buy one of the regular ones anyway. But let me know in the comments if you own the beauty blender swirl and if it works really well because I do think it is really, really cute. All right, the next product on my anti-haul list is the new Givenchy Le Rouge Sculpt Two-Tone Lipsticks. I'm just not a huge fan of two-tone lipsticks in general. So I feel like, I can't remember which brand it was that maybe a year ago or so, maybe it was Dior, I can't really remember, came out with a two-tone lipsticks. And for a little while, it was like a little bit of a trend, that whole like, look, I can put on, oh no, maybe it was Benefit. I'm pretty sure it was Benefit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Benefit that came out with like the lipstick where you can, it like, it has two tones so that it almost looks like you have on lip liner and have lipstick. And those were pretty, but I feel like it was a little bit of a fad, right? It was a little bit of a trend that kind of came and went. These lipsticks, first of all, are $38 each. And duh, right? Givenchy is a very luxury brand. But some of these shades, oh my goodness, are just too much. So there's five shades in the collection. And I mean, for starters, I just... I personally see putting on these lipsticks as like a little bit of a disaster because especially with the dark shade, like what if it doesn't, what if it doesn't work the way it's supposed to? Like then you just have these like dark splotchy patches all over your lips and then if you do like massage the colors into each other, like what kind of color are you gonna get? Is it still a pretty color? Is it still the color you want? Like which color, the darker, the deeper color or the lighter color, which color is the one you're going to be left with. Do you know what I mean? And it just seems like, I don't know. It just seems like let's let's put that trend to sleep. Let's put it to bed and like let's just use our lip liner and our lipstick if we want to. Like if I just feel like doing the whole like lip liner and a lipstick, like two tone, dual tone lipsticks is just I think it was like cute while it lasted and if you have the right tones that are light enough, I think it can work. But I just think it's unnecessary, and that's why I'm just, I'm definitely going to be giving these lip colors a miss. The very last thing on my anti-haul list is from the brand La Mer, and it is their mist, or the mist, and it is $75. My goodness. So the little description on, um, I looked this up on Nordstrom.com, is that the mist by La Mer is formulated with marine botanical extracts to instantly refresh, hydrate, and rebalance your skin for a more energized and revived appearance. So, okay. This is interesting, right? Because La Mer is like one of the most luxury brands. They're like La Prairie, um, I can't really think of any other like super luxury brands off the top of my head, but those are brands that like you, you're splurging for. Their products are $100 and up, um, all in that general area, very, very expensive. And I've used some La Mer products before and I've quite liked them. I think that they are, they're a good luxury brand for the most part. However, this one popped up on, I don't remember where, I think it was like some sort of like Facebook feed or something as a new product that La Mer was coming out with. And it just made me chuckle a little bit because for starters, I couldn't find the ingredient list on Nordstrom's website. And usually for anything that has to do with skincare, there is an ingredient list, which just made me kind of feel like this mist, like even though it's being touted as like, oh, there's like marine botanical extracts in it. Like it's probably 90% water with like 10% some sort of like 
you know, maybe some sort of like essence of marine biology. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It just seems kind of silly. And to me, it really rang as like, okay, this is water that like has maybe like some sort of special something in it that you spray on your face. It says like spray it on your face to like feel like instantly moisturized and energized. I'm like, really? Like for $75, do I need to be like spraying like fancy water at my face? Or like, should I just use a setting spray or, you know, like it's summertime. So like, grin and bear it. I don't know. It just seems like really silly to me. And, you know, I'm all about kind of splurging on luxury skincare products. And, you know, for the most part, I can rationalize some of the more like pricier items. But this one I was just kind of gave a deep eye roll too because it just seemed a little silly. Okay guys and that's everything on my anti haul list. Again definitely leave me a comment down below. Let me know if any of these products are on your anti haul lists or if you own any of the products I would be really interested to know. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and I will talk to you all really soon. Bye guys!